Hello, and welcome to Falcon Center. I'm Connor Ho, and here's Gina Cuscio. Up first, we have a preview of the women's Concordia women's hockey game against the Northland Jills. The Concordia Falcons women's hockey team will be facing Northland College in Ashland, Wisconsin on November 30th at 8 p.m. for game one of the two-game series. So far this season, the Falcons have played eight games, six of which have been for conference. In those eight games, they have had 24 goals and 26 assists averaging around three goals per game and 25.9 shots per game. They have a current winning record of 4-2 with two ties. Most likely in the net for CW will be senior goaltender Christina Pattengill. In the last game alone against St. Norbert, Pattengill had 18 saves in goal. With 125 career saves, Pattengill will be an important asset for the Falcons going into the next game. Another player contributing to the Falcons' success that we will more than likely see on the ice is junior forward Natasha Wanless with seven goals so far this season. This makes her the highest scoring player for CUW as of right now. Along with Wanless, most likely in the lineup, you can also expect to see senior forward Kristen Kennedy out on the ice as she's played in all eight games so far this year. According to schedules from the past five years, this is the first time CUW will face Northland. However, the odds are in Concordia's favor based on Northland's record. The Northland College Jills have had a very tough start to this season, as they have a lackluster record of just 1-5-1. Northland College, who has struggled to find the back of the net this season, as they were shut out in the first three games of the season, finally got their first win of the season as they overcame their previous scoring misfortunes as they filled the Aurora University's net by winning of a score of 5-0. Northland has seen their top production coming from two new faces this season. Freshman Megan Adar and Caridon Cavio have fit well with their new squad as they are both tied for the team lead with three points each and Adar leading the way with two goals. With the lack of scoring coming from the Northland players, the Jills have really had to rely heavily on their sophomore goalie Gabby Sir, another underclassman leading the way who is most likely getting the start in this upcoming matchup. So far this season, Sir has posted a very impressive save percentage of .931, which is good enough for six in the conference, along with a 2.56 goals against average. Sir has been the backbone for the Jills team that averages 14 less shots per game than their opponents. There isn't a rich history between these two teams, and it is the first time they are meeting in program history, so Northland will be looking to turn their season around with the birth of a new rivalry. Up next, we have Israel Mitchell, who will highlight the women's basketball game against the Concordia Chicago Cougars. Thank you, Connor. My name is Israel Mitchell. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the CUW women's basketball team. Let's get started, shall we? On November 27, 2018, the 2-1 Concordia University women's basketball team traveled down south to River Forest, Illinois, for an early season divisional, divisional matchup against the 2-3 Concordia University Chicago Cougars women's team. What happened, you ask? Well, let me enlighten you. Concordia, Wisconsin went bombs away in the first quarter, racking up four long balls, and the Falcons' defense was in full shutdown mode, giving up just two points in the first ten minutes of play. After one, the Falcons held a commanding 21-2 lead over the CUC Cougars. The Falcons' lead over the Cougars continued to grow as the second quarter continued on. The Falcons won in the halftime with a 37-14 lead over the Cougars. Overall, the Falcons led by over 20 points for 23 minutes and 52 seconds of the game and completely dominated the Cougars in every facet of the game. Some of the key players in the game for the Falcons were senior guard Bailey Barker, who was scoreless in the first quarter, but after that exploded for 16 points, including two three-pointers just before halftime. She ended with 20 points to go along with six assists. Junior guard Ariana Lidico added 12 points, and senior forward Ashley Solberg had her first career double-double with 11 points and 10 rebounds. In the end, the Falcons forced 29 turnovers and scored 31 points off of them, while outshooting the Cougars 43% to 29%. That's a lot. Up next for the Falcons, they will take on the Wisconsin Lutheran Warriors on Saturday inside the R. John Buck Fieldhouse for their home opener of the season. As of late, the CUW men's hockey team gameplay has been tremendous after defeating St. John's by a final score of 3-2 last weekend on their brief road trip. The Falcons also absolutely obliterated Bethel 9-2 last weekend, and Nick Guerra had five goals in two games. Nick Guerra was most recently named to Team, team of the Week by D3Hockey.com and Athlete of the Week by NCHA.org and CUW Athletics. However, the Falcons' winning streak ended Friday afternoon as they visited the Fox Valley Ice Arena to take on the Aurora Spartans. The Spartans had added another win on their season, 
by finishing off the Falcons with a final score of 5-0. to zero. The Spartans registered two goals in the first period, one goal in the second period, and finished off the game with two goals in the third period. The Spartans approved a 6-3-0 overall and 4-1-0 in the NCHA. Aurora sophomore, sophomore goaltender Josh Boyko made 24 saves for his second career NCAA shutout, while Falcon sophomore Dakota Delbridge made 31 saves to finish off that evening. The game-winning goal came from junior, Liam, or junior forward Liam Sertzinger at 9.23 in the opening period. The one bright spot of the evening was that CUW was able to win 38 of the 60 face-offs, including junior forward Dante Hahn being responsible for 16 face-off wins. Ultimately, CUW would finish the game with seven penalties and would allow two shorthanded short goals in the third period and move to 0-4-1 in the NCHA. The Falcons look towards tomorrow night as the Lake Forest Foresters come to the Ozaki Ice Center to ignite a heated rivalry matchup with puck drop at 7 p.m. Now we'll take it on over to Will as he covers NC ACHA hockey. Thank you, Dakota. The Concordia University ACHA hockey team traveled to Pennsylvania over the weekend for a two-game series against the University of Pittsburgh. On Friday night, two third-period Falcons goals proved to be the difference as they won 4-2. Pittsburgh found the net first at 13.52 in the first period as Aiden Cooley beat Falcons goalie Nate Eminger. <coughs> Cooley received a pass from forward Shmuley Reitman and took a shot from the right slot to give the Panthers a 1-0 lead. Concordia would answer less than two minutes later at 15.25 in the first period. Adam Nasty took a pass from Andrew Depp and evened the game at one apiece. It was Nasty's second goal of the season. Heading into the second period, the Falcons managed to break the tie at the 7-12 mark as Jonathan Grodzki stole the puck and beat the Panthers' defense for an unassisted goal. Grodzki has been the Falcons' biggest playmaker this season, telling 16 goals and 25 assists over 20 games. He currently sits 16th in scoring for the ACHA Men's Division II with 41 points. Pittsburgh would tie the game late in the second as Evan Kopernukar scored his fourth goal of the season. Nate Bieri and Reitman assisted on the play. But the third period was all Falcons, as Alec Morano and Grodzki both scored to push the game to 4-2 in favor of the Falcons. Morano slaps one past Panther goalie Curtis Hart after receiving quick passes from Grodzki and Ethan Natsky for his team-leading third game-winning goal of the season. Morano leads the team with 22 goals and is second on the team in points with 34. Grodzki added the insurance goal late in the third period off an assist from Cody Faber to keep the game out of reach. Amateur picked up the win in his first appearance of the season. After missing the first couple months due to injury, he played well, stopping 19 of 21 shots. Hart wasn't quite as effective for Pittsburgh, stopping 21 of 25 shots and was charged with a loss. He is now 4-6 on the season with a 4.36 goals against average. The win gives CUW their sixth of the season and the record is now 6-13 overall. The second game of the weekend series comes tomorrow evening with puck dropping at 9 p.m. Now we'll take it over to Logan for a re recap of a recent wrestling match. Thanks, Will. On Saturday, December 1st, the Falcons wrestling team competed in the 15th annual MSOE Invite in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Falcons were coming off their hosting of the 26th annual CUW Open in the R. John Book Fieldhouse. Eric Martinson was the top finisher for the Falcons in that competition, finishing the day 2-2 two two after being granted a first round bye. No Falcons placed in the tournament, but they still left feeling confident being that it is early in the season. Because of weight loss limits, the two top Falcon wrestlers, Eric Martinson and Miguel Angel Betancourt, did not compete at MSOE, making it a difficult day for CUW. Junior Ramiro Vasquez had a rough day in the 133 pound division, losing his first two matches and being eliminated. Freshman Connor Nolan found some success, picking up a win by fall one minute and 44 seconds into his match over St. Olaf's Joaquin Montero in the 149-pound bracket. Another freshman, Cameron Caldwell, also earned one win on the day in a match against Gavin Smith from Milliken at 165 pounds. Junior Alex Montbriand pulled out a close one in a 7-6 decision against Elmhurst Matt Tobin. The final Falcon to record one win on the day was freshman Colin Riley, who had an 11-2 major decision versus Ethan, Ethan Smith from Elmhurst in the heavyweight division. The remainder of the Falcons, Sean Cracky, Brian Big Poppy Diaz, Reed McNeil, and Danny Fay, finished the day 0-2.
The Falcons' next bout will be on Thursday, December 6th at home in the Arjon Boog Fieldhouse as they host Lakeland in a duel meet. They will then get ready to travel to Las Vegas to compete in the Desert Duels at the beginning of the Christmas break. You've been watching Falcon Center.